You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Live. I am Renee Ritchie. I'm Adam Zeiss. And we are back for more wearables. And we are going to dive headlong into watches. Watches. My wrist is still up for grabs, Adam. My wrist has no loyalty whatsoever yet. Mine is covered usually, but I don't really have Well, you have, have a no site all about connected watches. So I, I have so literally I seen you with like nine watches on one I arm. do. I, there's pictures of many watches at the same time. So which watch are we talking about now? Uh, I believe we're going to talk about Martian watches now. M other planetary watches. Other outer space alien interplanetary watches. Interplanetary, interplanetary watches. Interplanetary watches. Awesome. Absolutely. So, Stan? Stan. Adam? Welcome Pleasure. to the show. Thank you. David. Nice to meet you. Renee, nice to meet you. Renee, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Greetings. I'm checking okay. your wrists as Renee, I'm talking thanks. to you. Just to make sure. There we go. I'm off wrist. So Martian watches. Right? So we're kind of the contrarian watch. Contra How so? Meaning well, that uh, while everyone else started out thinking, let's just shrink the uh, phone and put it on your wrist and you swipe for apps and you press buttons and navigate, we thought that seemed kind of crazy and not something long term you want to do. And so we. Two years ago, we were the first to put voice on a smartwatch so that you could connect to Siri or Android, but uh, two years ago, and we won one of the best of show finalists uh, for uh, CNET, uh, but uh, two years ago, only 20% of the people even that had voice command on their smartphone would use it. Use it. Mm -hmm. But now it's well over 50%, people are getting it, and we're back stronger than ever with uh, nine new uh, models of voice command watches, and David here with guest watches. So your watches look that. like watches. Well, that's that what we've heard. <laughs> that's the idea. No, I, I, I'm saying that sort of tongue in cheek, but it's true because a lot of smart watches bear almost no resemblance to watches. Precisely. Well, like Stan said earlier, there's smart watches or smart phones like squished down onto your wrist. Well, early on, we we really it's a, it's been a great uh, day and a half already here, uh, with uh, talking to press and others, and people are thinking that the the market really is moving past the the kind of geek techie who wants to be seen with a flat panel watch to know he's wearing a smart watch, and they're moving back to design. And so we, we felt that was going to be happening and it's going. And, and the reality is, I would put our watches up against anything out there in terms of features and functionality. So what uh, are these features? Well, there's two parts to the smartwatch. There's outgoing command and control. Yes. And there's incoming information. So command and control, 90% of ours is done through voice. You can read a message, you can send a message, you could set a reminder, you could get a sports score, you could search the web, you can get directions, you can say navigate me home, all those through your wrist it's always there, not a headset. It acts like a headset on your wrist. So it's always there, but it's not in your ear. And it headset look. on the wrist, that, you know you should patent that right now. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> uh, we tried it. <laughs> Trademark the phrase. We got it. So, uh, but that's technically kind of how the thing works. And then there's another half dozen features controlling your music, controlling your camera remotely, finding your phone if it's under a newspaper. Another half dozen things that we can do with the watch that aren't voice command. So here's my thing. I, I have a phone, but there's a certain amount of things that are so brief but still important that I want to do them, and I just I don't want to have to reach for my phone or go get it every time. They're very small interactions, but if you could take that from my phone and stick it somewhere on my body, I will be eternally grateful. So what are those? Well, for me, it's logging, <laughs> it's remote control, it's, um, uh, what do they call it, authentication, uh, t some forms of communication and notification. I just want all those things where like, yeah. I can passively look at something, I don't have to deal with it right now. Well, your first three we don't do, the last two we do. <laughs> so, Well, no, you mentioned, um, you mentioned kind of sort of doing there. some of those things. Well, we do, I mean, the command and control thing and all those things going in, I mean, that's a big differentiator. And you got HomeKit from Apple. Yes. We're the only phone with voice that works with iOS right now that we know of, unless there's an announcement <laughs> about to happen here at the show. <laughs> and the Apple Watch come on, and with that, Apple, you know, probably only for our benefit, but they're investing hundreds of millions of dollars in the whole initiative of voice and Siri and yes. HomeKit. So we hope by the end of the year, you'll be able to say secure the home and you'll lock the doors, dim the lights, uh, lower the temperature. Well that's an amazingly human interaction though, right? Like you're not punching buttons, you're not using a keyboard, you're telling something what you right. want to have done and it's just doing it for you. Well that's the goal. And the, and the key with this, uh, Android Wear watches also allow voice commands, but they usually get a text response. So if you're driving or something, you then still have to look. But yeah. most of our responses, almost all, are voice. voice. Uh, so they work. So Siri will then confirm certain things. If I'm making a note to call Adam tomorrow at noon, he'll say, I've made your note to call Adam at noon. Crash the compound, crash the compound. <laughs> Just everything closes. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, there. that's the outgoing. <laughs> then incoming, and I love it, Adam, that you're wearing a, a pebble steel. I am wearing a pebble uh, steel. And we'd go up head to head How with people, understand what's going on. How, First of all, it's great. It but when you get a notification on any other <laughs> smartwatch, as far as we know, it 
vibrates and you look. Vibrates it's and horrible. Look. And if you similar. miss it, first of all, it drives you crazy. And, and our first watch <laughs> drove us crazy. We thought, this can't be. So I went to the engineers and said, can you just at least make text messages feel different, different vibration. They said, we can make everything feel different. And now we have this kind of what we call smart vibrations, but you basically filter what you want to get. So you may say, I get so many emails, I don't care. Yes. Uh, but then you can put a custom vibration on this thing. So if, uh, if a family member wants to use LinkedIn for messages or WhatsApp or something and you know it's them, because you can't get the person through iOS yes. or Android, to but you, you yeah. can with a different app. So if my kids use WhatsApp and they're the only ones with me, then I know with a vibration of four long vibrations. Well that's a super point because uh, watches are so intimate and if they just buzz all the time, if everything is important, nothing is important. Right. Exactly. And that's the whole key. And I'm amazed others haven't done, I don't want to talk people into it, <laughs> but uh, hopefully we've got patents pending, et cetera. But the, the point is that contextual uh, vibration pattern is maybe the biggest thing we've ever done with a smartwatch, and people don't even see it. That was something no. we saw last year, right? Because I know we had Martian on the show last year, and it was, well, it was it, new to the Martian That was new last, last year right? with Notifier, with and iOS. that's what got it the awards that it did. Sure. Uh, yeah. Not to mention that w once you get that vibration, oftentimes you're in a conversation like this, you can't look at it, mm -hmm. and it goes away. But with ours, within five minutes, we just turn on an accelerometer, right. and uh, like here's one coming in right now, and I can just tap the glass, and that's, Adam, get on these camera That's things. like something you can do on the on iOS too, I think, right? Because you can set up custom notifications yeah. for vibrations. So. so we had a question in the chat room from Thurber, and he wants to know how does it deal with ambient noise? Like if you're on a subway or you're in a bar, how, how good is your audio processing? Well, it's not, it's it's pretty good. Uh, the, the whole chipset is a noise cancellation factor. We only awesome. have one microphone, but still works quite well. Uh, in real noisy environments, uh, it's it's sometimes sketchy. But I've been using it here with voice commands at incredibly loud uh, So I'm the guy who's in the bar. Turn off, turn off, and then suddenly the music drops, and then I'm the idiot there yelling, yelling at my watch, going, turn off, ah! Yeah. Oh, you're the guy. Right? That's me, Absolutely. sorry about that, so, I apologize. It was a wedding, but, I was but very it's awkward. Not meant, I mean, <laughs> we got in and people were talking when we first came out, well, you know, I'm standing on a street corner in New York City and trying to talk to my wife, and I, I don't think this thing works well. Well, you wouldn't stand with your smartphone with the, uh, on, on, speaker. on speaker mode, on a corner in New York City <laughs> I have seen it. that guy, that you is know, not a good guy. I, so, I do it all the time. But, uh, <laughs> but in your car, yes. on, a, on a ski Absolutely. lift, where you don't want to drop yeah. the thing, and you're, I'm talking to people all getting sports scores all Can the way. Can I make an admission? Year. I am so lazy, I don't want to type anymore. I just say everything now. Right. And like, it's, I, it's humiliating, but I am that guy. It's good to well, be lazy, though. It is. I mean, and it's I also safer. When, when I use it a lot for driving, and SMSs come through even when you're driving. This, this watch will actually read the, the SMS to you out loud, and then you can reply using voice. So don't have to take your eyes off the road. Don't have to press any buttons. It's all. So it looks like right you have the winter 2015 collection in front of us. Can we pull those over <laughs> so we can get a better look at yes. them? Exactly, winter style. Uh, so the top uh, are all women's watches. You can see this so is a Monarch a line. They're 40 millimeter. And uh, you know we we're proud of the fact that both Guess and ourselves are now designing f smart watches for women rather than the unisex deal, uh, and we've really tried to model after the most popular kind of designs that are out there. And then men's a little more ruggedized. Uh, uh, this is our kind of flagship commander. Yeah, Twitter is making fun of me for asking about fashion with wearables, but it really is a legitimate thing. People want to wear things that represent themselves. It's totally legitimate. I mean, I think we, as Stan said earlier, we kind of moved past the time period where somebody wants to represent that I'm a techie or I'm yeah. on the cutting edge. I have a screen on my wrist. Precisely, and uh, for with us tape. as being the guest watch people coming into a great partnership with Martian, and our Guest Connect product is powered by Martian technology, but we are much more about retaining the aesthetics of a core traditional watch. Sure. One of the things we really like about partnering with Martian together is we've gotten uh, the buttons or the pushers now transferred over to the right side of the case, which maintains the aesthetic of more of a traditional watch feature rather than something that looks so uber techy. Well, you've got the crown. I mean, like anyone who's familiar with a watch will be familiar with how how you are laid out. You've got the crown, the face, the design. Precisely. And uh, without sacrificing a ton of thickness. What's the pricing and availability for all these guys? So for the Martian line? Yeah, we're going to be probably 200 to $400 okay. in that and range. And they're all going to vary all across the they world? They will. Some of the low end here are a nylon composite basis, and okay. they'll be less expensive, and the high end all stainless steel uh, all around, uh, they'll be higher. When we add jewels to them, that mm -hmm. goes even higher. 
So, so what's the breakdown? Who buys these kinds of watches? Are these people who are traditional watch wearers who want to get smarter, or are they people who've used wearables and, and kind of want a more sophisticated look, or maybe a mix of both? I think it's a combination of both. Yeah, I think so. I mean, everybody who's trying to project the market size of wearables, you know, there's, I, I read an article the other day of somebody with a nice round set of figures. It's going to be a $10, million, $10 billion industry. 50% is going to be cannibalization. 50% is going to be Somewhere between set-top boxes and phones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a great round number. But I think, uh, ultimately, the consumer's going to decide, and I think what we're excited about with both collections of product is you're going to get a cross section of both. People that want the technology, but also people that are, hey, I was going to buy a watch anyway, mm -hmm. but why not spend a little bit extra and get something that looks like the watch that I wanted, but uh, contains all the smart so features. So what's the little bit extra? What's the range now? Like, what's the point of entry for these watches? And if you're really, if you're an aficionado, how far can you go? Yeah, so for our guest product line, uh, we start, kick off at around 125 and go up to about 300. This product will open and launch in the early part of Q3 at about 350. Nice. Um, and for the, the geeks out there, all the, the specs wise, I mean, micro USB charging on the side. Yes. Yep. Uh, the screen's an OLED display. Yep. Yes, right? it is. Correct. Exactly. Hey, you're good. Um, I do a Been little bit this. of this for a living. So, and, and <laughs> again, between the, the notifications and the, the voice command, um, you know, we, we're, we're very proud of the feature set. But, you know, one point I want to make, though, is, is a key with guests coming into the game is that almost all distribution's been through electronics channels worldwide. <laughs> And this is opening up a whole new game. Certainly Apple is trying to do that with uh, coming in and going more fashion. Is yet to be seen where that distribution will be. But clearly we can envision together being in uh, classic watch departments of, of department stores. Well, there's always an argument that you know, there's going to be huge players, but there's going to be people who look at them and go, I like that idea, but not that. And then there's going to be a huge market for all the other ones. Right. So, well, it'll be a live and learn. You know, it's a truly Definitely. a pioneering world, and it's, uh, it's an awesome. exciting time. I'm looking well, forward to it. Where can we find out more? Uh, you can look on www.guestwatch.com as well as www.martianwatches.com. Cool. Awesome. Very much. Thank Great. You for thanks being a lot, Adam. Really I'm excited. excited. Cheers, okay. Ray. Thanks, thanks so much. Adam, Renee. Great meeting you. Thank you. Great to meet you Great as well. meeting you. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Adam. So that's it. Yes, absolutely. Phones are, phones are from Venus, watches are from Mars. Something like that, yeah. Awesome. They have women's watches for you, men's watches for me. Everybody's I, happy. I, I actually have been wearing women's watches for a while. <laughs> Shamelessly, so I, they're great. Among they're light, things, they're fast, they're. I have no, Adam, Amazing. you, you, there's nothing you can say that will embarrass me. You're like Embarrassingly a small wrist, Dave Curley, admitting that on live broadcast, I'm very proud of you too. Uh, so we are doing CES <laughs> live, we are not stopping. We're going to be back with the one and only Callie it's, Lewis. It's like a CES live. We're going to see this the way it's supposed to be done. With real talent, it'll be amazing. <laughs> you are still Adam Zeiss? I'm still Adam Zeiss. I am still Renee Ritchie. Connect we have a break oh. coming up. Can we plug this? Connectedly.com. Connectedly.com slash CS Live. Oh, iMore.com slash CS Live. Lots of great prizes at GeekBeat TV slash giveaways. 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 Enter a lot, enter all the time. And we will be back after this short break. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned. Bye, chat room.